Hi, Dr. Patrick Gentempo here, and thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. We have great content in store for you. I'm so excited to be here with you, and let's jump right into it. You know, I had this intuition that I think I developed at a younger age where I, I used to play massive online multiplayer games when mm -hmm. I was in my early teens. Uh, the one I played in particular was called Diablo 2. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about this game is that I started out playing the game. You could think of it as like a digital dun Dungeons and Dragons type game. But behind the game, there was an, an actual economy. People are trading items and a, a currency emerged actually. It was called the Stone of Jordan Ring that kind of emerged as money. And I ended up really getting expert in the trading. I ended up just trading full time and I accumulated a lot of wealth in the game. And then that in-game wealth started being sold on eBay. So all of this in-game wealth became real world wealth. And I think this set an intuition for me that the digital age was gonna change everything. Everything was gonna be digitized. I didn't know it at the time, but it just left this mark on me. So I was trying to orient my career toward that convergence point of kind of like commerce, digital tech, and finance and or media. And I think crypto is just the uh, the nexus of all. You know, something you said in that uh, rings true as far as people getting into crypto even is that it's one thing to have this sort of abstract understanding, but when you get into the game, so to speak, you really start to understand it and you can't truly understand it till you do. And it seems like all oh, the same thing when you said, hey, I, I kind of was in this game and it, and it created this economy and actually translated into real world uh, you know, money or wealth for you. Uh, you know, that, that experiential side, I think is kind of important. Do you see that when people are trying to learn about crypto that they need to have a bit of experience to really understand it? Absolutely. I think you get a huge benefit seeing markets up close and personal, whether, whether you've actually been in, you know, Wall Street trading pit or, you know, I was fortunate to get kind of the basics in a video game, which is interesting. Um, you need to understand how markets develop and how people game theoretically position themselves against one another. You know, it, it is a game. Markets are a game. You're trying to accumulate profits and wealth and all these things. And the selection of money actually is a game. The reason gold became money was due to these, these game theoretic dynamics. And I think that is actually the real key to grasping Bitcoin. It's very interdisciplinary. You need to know a, a lot or you need to know a little about a lot, I should say. But I think once you comprehend the game theory side, that people will always favor the money with the most inflexible supply, which is to say the medium most resistant to debasement or inflation. And it's, it's a very logical and, and simple, but it's hard to get to that point to understand it. Um, I think that's the real breakthrough moment for most people understanding the value proposition of Bitcoin versus something like gold. Yeah, and that's interesting uh, when you talk about kind of it, the scarcity of it or the, or the fact that, uh, you know, there's a limited supply, which is basic principle of economics. But, you know, did you look at it and say, but wait a minute, it's just a digital algorithm out there. Uh, you know, how can it how can it really have any true value or how can it actually how can it get adoption, you know, based on it almost being like a game? Yeah, it's funny when I first heard about Bitcoin. This is, is hard to admit, but I think I wrote it off just because of the name mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Like it sounds like a joke. The word bit implies something small or minute and then coin, you know, it's a small denomination of money. So just that it, I think I wrote it off basically on its name and I'll always kind of kick myself for that. <laughs> but when you start to peel back the layers on this, yeah, you, there is. And this is another stumbling block for a lot of people is that money is a social device or a social construct. So it is, its value is derived from people's confidence in its monetary properties, we could say, or the credibility of these monetary properties. Um, but what, you know, even, even when we say game theory, that sounds kind of lightweight too. It sounds like, mm -hmm. oh, very theoretical and out there, but game theory is pervasive. I mean, we observe this in nature. It's how animals interact with one another. Um, it's very deeply rooted in our biology, let's say. And when you see that kind of very simply, we're trading in markets to try and satisfy the wants of one another, better, faster, cheaper. Whoever can figure that out can 
uh, create a profitable enterprise, right? That's kind of the objective of, of entrepreneurship, but you want to store those profits in a medium that is maximally resistant to the willpower of everyone else. And that's pretty much what gold was. It was like, no matter how hard we tried to produce anything in the world, the supply of gold increased the most slowly and the most predictably, which made it the optimal medium for wealth storage over time. So it's, it's, you almost have to get down to, you have to get past the thing itself. It's not the thing actually that we're after, it's the services the thing renders to us. Mm -hmm. And gold, you know, delivered these, these five properties of money I cover often, which are divisibility, durability, recognizability, portability, scarcity. Gold was the best tool for rendering those services. So divisibility, money clearly needs to be separable and recombinable at various scales. You want to be able to buy a cup of coffee as much as you want to be able to buy a house, right? It should be very simple to scale. Uh, durability simply means the money will persist over time. You can put gold in a safe and it will be there pretty much forever. Uh, whereas if you use something like fruit, you know, it would deteriorate pretty quickly. So it needs durability over time to store value over time. Recognizability means that the money needs to be, uh, you need to be able to authenticate or verify the money. You know, with gold, we had these time honored techniques of assaying it. Actually the term sound money, which you've probably heard a lot, was the sound a gold coin made, made when it hit a surface. It made a very particular sound, uh, the resonance of which indicated to an individual that it was pure gold. Um, with, you know, bills, we have counterfeit resistant strips. You see people doing the marker on the hundred dollar bill. All these things are the recognizability property of money. Uh, portability, rather obvious as well. You wanna be able to move the money across space. Right? If you're trying to buy something in another state or another city, you got to send the money there clearly. And then finally, uh, the one we just mentioned was scarcity. Now this one's a little bit tricky because most people think if there's a limited supply of something, then it's scarce automatically, but that's not true, right? Even if there's just one, if I do one painting, there's only one Robert Breedlove original painting, you would think, oh, it's really scarce, but no, there's no demand for it. So it's not scarce. It's just a one-off item. So scarcity actually occurs when demand exceeds supply so there's more demand for a thing than there is a quantity of a thing that's what causes market actors to compete over it and that's what causes it to have a price um, and this is separate from value the other example would be oxygen right oxygen's very valuable to all of us all the time there's no price for it why because the supply way outstrips the demand Thanks so much for being here and watching that video. And can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're posting new content. You'll be alerted right away when we do. To share this with people you think might benefit from the information, and certainly it helps us if you like the video. So if you like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And again, thank you so much for being here with me right now.